All right, let's talk about the perfect brush. The perfect brush is a feature of the masking brush and is available in just about every module in the perfect photo suite. It's one of the most powerful tools. I'm going to show you how to use it. And I'm going to talk about some of the new features to the perfect brush that came out in perfect photo suite 7.5. In this case, we're working on a fairly large image. This is actually a raw file from a Canon 5D Mark II, so it's a big 22 megapixel file. What I want to do is I want to replace this rather boring, uh, flat looking sky that has no clouds in it with one that has some nice fluffy clouds. First thing we want to do is we want to go find a new sky. Now, I'm going to use one of the ones that's built in that comes with the suite. I just go to the Extras tab here inside of Perfect Layers. Let's go to the backgrounds and then to the skies. Let's open that up. And you see how it gives me thumbnails of all the different skies that are included. You can also use a sky of your own. I'm going to use the new Quick View browser so I can see a larger version of these to pick out the one that I want to use. So I'm just going to click right here on the Quick View browser button. This will give me a much larger preview of those skies. When you're doing a sky replacement, it's important to look for two things. You want to look for the lighting, which has a lot to do with the time of day. So you want to pick a sky that matches the lighting conditions and the weather conditions. And you also want to pick one that's shot from about the same perspective. Uh, so a lot of these ones at the top, while being very pretty, are aimed a little too high. I really want something where the horizon line is a little lower in the image. So probably something like this one will work well. So when you find the one you want, you just click on it, and it's going to automatically add that as a new layer here inside of Perfect Layers. And I'm just going to use the free transform tool to position it and size it. So I want to make sure that the bottom of my sky is just below the horizon in my image. So I'm going to go right about there, and let's just stretch it. Nice thing about skies is you can stretch them around quite a bit, and you can't really tell. So there we go. We've got our new sky positioned. I'm going to drag it underneath my foreground layer that hides it. It's just sitting behind this boring looking sky. Now we'll use the masking brush to paint this sky away and reveal our new sky. So I'm just going to grab the masking brush tool right here. So you can see as I paint it reveals that much better, much more interesting looking sky. Now the problem is when I get down here to the edge, I would have to zoom in really close and paint incredibly accurately to be able to get a good transition. And especially for something like the tree, it would be almost impossible. You really have to create a very complex mask. Now, you could go in and if you have the perfect photo suite, you could use perfect mask, which really excels at this type of complex masking. But for something on a fairly simple background like this solid blue sky, you can actually use the built-in perfect brush. And to turn it on, you just toggle the little perfect brush checkbox right here. You can also use the new Command R or Control R keyboard shortcut, which allows you to turn that on and off quickly while you're brushing. There we go. Now I'm just going to brush with my brush all the way into the horizon. And you notice how it's stopping automatically at the trees and painting that sky away. So I can just paint right along the edge and it automatically creates the mask for me. Even when I come into the tree with those little branches and needles, it's going to automatically remove just the color of blue in the sky and leave all of those green needles and the brown branches behind because they're a different color. So I'm just going to brush along the edge here and we'll kind of finish this up. Now that's done a pretty good job so far, but you notice there's a lot of area on the inside of the tree that I wasn't able to get. If I was to just brush straight across the tree, it would start to paint the tree away. We don't want to do that. We want to maintain the tree. So there's a great new feature in the perfect brush, which allows you to hold the color. You got to remember the way the perfect brush works is by sampling the color underneath the center of it. So what you do is you start to paint where you don't want, then hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on Windows and it stops sampling the colors at whatever the last colors you worked on. So right now, I've sampled the color from the sky, I'm holding down my command key, and now it'll only paint away that particular color as I paint through. So now I can brush right through the middle of the tree and get rid of all the color of the sky in the middle without having to have it automatically or accidentally remove any other color. So this gives me a nice, clean-looking mask. Let's go ahead and take a look at that mask. I'm just going to turn on the grayscale mask so we can take a look. There you go. Let's take a look at the before and the after. So there's before. 
and there's after. Just like that. The power of the perfect brush is available to you inside of perfect layers. It's also inside of perfect effects and perfect black and white and perfect portrait. So it's wherever you need to brush in an effect or change layers. Thanks for watching.